Good afternoon, everyone. From behind the organ, these guys can see me, but you can't. We're going to try something a little different for our prelude today. There's a wonderful new song to the parish in the hymnal at number 667. You'll see that it's our um, preparation, presentation, offertory hymn, number 667. It's called, How Shall We Name God? And I'm going to teach you the refrain. So go to number 667. <clears throat> I'm going to play it through once, sing it, and then have you join me on it. And the refrain starts, may the church at prayer recall. It sounds like this. kind of complicated, but it's not. It sounds like this. May the church I pray give you the first little section, have you repeat it. Then I'll do the next section, have you repeat it. So, may the church at prayer recall sounds like this. That's kind of easy. Sounds like this. May the church at prayer recall. Now you, ready? May the church at prayer recall. Good, here's the next part. That no single the big finish. and then have you join me on the refrain. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Today we celebrate Trinity Sunday, and 
uh, the mystery of who God is, and it's great for all of us to be here on this Memorial Day weekend as well. Uh, let's see who is visiting us so we can welcome you to our church today. Do we have any visitors on this side? We're here. Where from? Plainfield, Illinois. Good to have you with us. Welcome. You had a little drive. Okay, welcome. Where else? St. Charles, Missouri. You beat them. You beat them. Okay. Where else? Austin. Oh, you really beat them. Okay, thank you. Thank you, honey. But you're back for the summer, right? Good to have you home again. Welcome. Grosse Seal, Michigan. Welcome. Oh, my Indianapolis. Wonderful. Good to have you home with us. Ken and Polly, welcome. Anyone else visiting? Okay. Where from? Canton, Michigan, good to have you with us. Welcome. What a beautiful gift to show us that you all on your vacations take time to pray and praise God. Let's go to our special prayer together and pray. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. My parish is composed of people like me. I help make it what it is. It'll be friendly if I am. It'll be holy if I am. It's pews to be filled if I help fill them. It will do great work if I work. It'll be prayerful if I pray. It'll make generous gifts to many causes if I'm a generous giver. It'll bring others into worship if I invite and bring them. It'll be a parish of loyalty and love, of fearlessness and faith, of compassion, charity, and mercy if I who make it what it is am filled with these same things. Therefore, the help of God, I now dedicate myself to the task of being all things that I want my parish to be. Amen. Amen. And I have some very good news for our parishioners. You know that Linda made it through her surgery very well, and she's doing well, so Linda payments on the mend. And if you want to send her Get Well cards, she had um, a heart pump put in, so it was a very serious surgery. So uh, please send her her home address because she's going to be going all over the place during recovery. And um, Boone is back home, too. He uh, passed all his surgeries. And uh, we just have to get Rosemary back here to church and Father Pat back to church. And I think we got the list pretty much covered of people that really have been needing our prayers. So uh, praise God for listening to us, beg him for, our, for the help of our, our loved ones. Uh, let's turn to each other and give each other a welcome as we celebrate this beautiful weekend. Welcome, everyone. Good to have you with us. Welcome. Good, good to see you, Bob. Good to see you. Bless you. Welcome home again. Welcome home. Welcome home, Mark. Bless you. Good to see everyone. Welcome, good to have you. Welcome, 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 good to have you. Welcome, good to see you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Welcome. Try to behave a little bit, okay? Shar, try to behave a little bit. Oh, I'll try. Okay, good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, you can do it. And on this solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity, our opening hymn is number 566. O oh God, Almighty Father, number 566.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, as we come today to worship the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, we know that he continues to bless our lives in so many ways, guiding us to truth, guiding us to be the people that God wants us each to be. For those times that we have failed in life, let's beg God to give us once again his mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of her Virgin all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life that is everlasting. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Praise you, we bless and you, we adore. God, our Father, who by sending into the word, world the word of truth, the spirit of sanctification, made known to the human race in your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
a reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Ask now of the days of old, before your time, ever since God created man upon the earth, ask from one end of the sky to the other. Did anything so great ever happen before? Was it ever heard of? Did a people ever hear the voice of God speaking from the midst of fire as you did and live? Or did any God venture to go and take a nation for himself from the midst of another nation by testings, by signs and wonders, by war, with strong hand and outstretched arm, and by great terrors, all of which the Lord, your God, did for you in Egypt before your very eyes. This is why you must, know now, you must now know and fix in your heart that the Lord is God in the heavens above and on earth below, and that there is no other. You must keep his statutes and commandments that I enjoin on you today, that you and your children after you may prosper, and that you may have long life on the land which the Lord your God is giving you forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God, for you did not receive a spirit of slavery to to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption, through whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if only we suffer with him so that me, we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they all saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Jesus Christ. if this sounds a little familiar to you. You sit down to watch a movie with someone. It could be whomever you wish it to be. And the film that you chose for the night is a whodunit movie. And as you know, these types of movies keep their audience guessing throughout the whole movie, trying to figure it out. However, the person you chose to watch the movie with you begins to quickly do something that really, really annoys you. I'm talking about the endless strings of questions. And they're coming early and they're coming often, all the time that disrupts you trying to watch the movie. Who's that guy? Who's that girl? Who's that guy? Why is he doing that? Why did she hide behind the garage? Who's that person we saw in the alley? Who was she talking to on the phone? Who did those 
two, why do those two look at each other that way? And if you ever had that happen to you, you know it drives you nuts. Eventually, you can't take it anymore, and you find yourself blurting out to the person, we're not supposed to know. Just relax, relax. We're going to find out more later. It's funny how we can sometimes be watching a mystery and still somehow we're annoyed by the fact that it is a mystery. Things aren't just supposed to be known to us, and everyone wants to know. But for others, not knowing is a source of mild aggravation and mental discomfort. Today we gather on this feast of the Holy Trinity, the Solemnity. And in reality today, we simply are celebrating God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We don't know everything, do we, about God? This God has been revealed to us as Father, one who has created all things, the Son who came to save us, and the Spirit who dwells within us always. This is a God who made himself known to the Jewish people first and rescued them time and time again. This is the God who spoke through their prophets to them, trying to lead them in the right way. This is the God who became one of us to save us from Adam's sin, who walked among us and showed us what it's truly like to love like God loves. This is a God who isn't distant. This is a God who promised to always be with us in an incredible way within us, guiding our lives at all times, closer than we could ever imagine. Yes, these are just a few things that we know about our God. A few things. The one who we celebrate today in this special way. But this is not only the God that we celebrate today. One could argue the other God is the one we actually are gathering here to celebrate and worship and to contemplate and to give thanks for, to sit in awe of. My friends, this is the unknowable God, the God who is mystery, the God who is far beyond words that we can wrap our minds around, the God who isn't like any other being, the God who is. This is the God who cannot be explained in any way, really, truly. Can't be put into a box. Can't be confined to a few words or even a few statements of faith. This is God. God. And as Catholics, we are so blessed to have so many people who have talked about God through the centuries. Countless of theologians who have tried to understand who God is and write that down for us who try to bring a little bit of understanding, to bring a little bit of insight, to give us glimpses of who our incredible God is. We have an incredible history of faithful men and women who have tried to put into words and into action these deep spiritual truths about who God is, trying to live the way of God's love. They have done this with prayerful hearts, holy reflections, and we're blessed, too, as a people to have the seven sacraments, which reveal to us in so many different ways something wonderful about God's grace and how he wants to convey grace to us, leading us to him. And we have the official teachings of the church, those profound and spirit-filled teachings that we call, are called to believe and embrace. Yes, we as a church have been gifted with many insights of our loving God, have been gifted with God's self-revelation and given responsibility to do our best as a people to pass on our beliefs about this God to every generation. And so that means that we have been shaped and taught to have a certain amount of the answers a certain, to the certain spiritual questions we can talk about God, yes we can, being the creator of all this. We can talk about Jesus taking away our sins on that cross, saving us and opening the gates of heaven. 
for us believers. We can talk about Mary and Joseph and the miracle they were asked to do to say yes to the Father. We can talk little, little about heaven and what we're called to and one day put into words what we will hope to see in God forever. And my friends, we must never mistake the things we can say about God with God himself. We must never mistake the inspired and essential teachings of the church as being the, a sort of complete explanation of really who God is. We must never mistake knowing a little with knowing a lot. Never mistake having some insights with having every insight. Never mistake knowing about God with knowing God. In other words, a few words or phrases aren't sufficient ever to answer those deepest questions. They just aren't. God is always so much more than we could ever imagine, ever try to explain, and ever try to understand. The mystery is always there to contemplate. Put simply, when it comes to talking about God, thinking about God or wondering about God, we must always remember that we need to hold on to the mystery. Be aware of what we're, we don't know yet. And that we must, in a sense, sit patiently back, attentively back, in our seats like at a movie, and let that movie play out of our lives trusting that in the end, we will know it all. We will know it all. And that is what we are called to do as a people, to keep pondering God. What a God we have. What a God that we need to keep trying to find and try to understand as we walk this journey to heaven. Amen. Shall we stand then and proclaim our faith? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God and light from light, true God and true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one, holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God, our Father, we come before you now as we bring our prayers to you on this solemn feast day. Bless us as we continue on our path of trying to know you even more in our lives of faith. that the church may be faithful to Christ's command to make disciples of all nations and may flourish throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That bishops and priests may work tirelessly to foster the hearts within the hearts of the people a strong love for their faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That world leaders may, be, may work diligently to promote peace among all nations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as the life of the Trinity fills God's people, they may, as the people of life, 
bring about a new respect and protection of every human being's right to life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That every member of our parish family may respond generously to sharing their God-given gifts and talents in the work of God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died, especially those in the military, who gave their lives in service to this country, may experience the everlasting peace of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the deceased Lou Testa, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for your own personal ten- intentions that you brought to this match, please mention them now to our Lord in the silence of your heart. We pray to the Lord. God, our Father, as we come here today on this Feast of the Trinity, we also come celebrating those that gave their lives for our nation. Bless us as we continue to learn more about you and to want to know you more in our lives. And bless us today, too, as we honor all those that have gone before us to the promised land of heaven. Answer our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. As you are now seated, we welcome the ushers as they come forward. Thank you, people of God, for how you bless our parish with your generosity. Thank you. And we sing hymn number 667, How Shall We Name God, number 667. my J 
dearest sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. The praise and glory of the name, the of the Holy the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us in your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in confessing the one true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person with their unity and substance and their unity and majesty. This is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, never ever cease who never cease ever to cry out each day as in one voice, as they and we acclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. And 
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jeff, our Bishop, all the clergy and religious, and all the priestly baptized people of God. Remember Lutesta, who came, who, who your servant who you called from this world to yourself, and all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Philip Neri, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. and informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us share Christ's love and peace with each other.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Those with us on live stream or who cannot receive at this time an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Cheryl, the body of Christ. John, the body of Christ. The body of Christ redeemed. Distribute the body of Christ. Our communion hymn is found in the hymnal at number 925, 925, All Who Hunger, number 925.
Let us pray. May the receiving of this holy sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of mind and body as we confess your eternal holy trinity, undivided unity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And as we go forth today, some reminders for all of you. First, our book study continues on Wednesdays at 6.30 in the evening and then Thursdays at 2 p.m., extra copies of the book is available, always to Cheryl, as we're studying the revival of the Holy Eucharist with Bishop Barron's book. Uh, our St. Francis Neary Feast Day is coming up. Uh, it's coming up this Thursday. We're having Mass at 6 p.m. And then following Mass, we're going to have a wonderful Italian dinner with nice red wine and wonderful great food. So uh, today is the day to sign up, everyone. We need you to sign up because Usually we have about 160 people come, and we only have a, a few people signed up so far. So come on, we need you to sign up today, okay? So please go back to the bulletin stands before you leave and sign up for this amazing evening together as we celebrate our feast day of our parish. Thank you to everyone who have given to CSA. Uh, we have uh, just over 25,000 to go, or is that to go yet? Or more than that to go? We raised 25000 already. Okay, good. We have 30% of our goal. Uh, we're looking for uh, people, that, if they haven't got their cards yet, to pick those up at the, welcome, at the bulletin stands today. Our goal this year is $76,000. So we really need a lot of help to get that, uh, that goal. We're looking for someone to lead the garden walk this year. Um, the lady that did it for the last few um, said it was her time to take a break, so we need someone. Um, honestly, if we don't have a leader, I don't know how to do it. So... Um, we really need someone to leave. We're not going to make it as difficult. We're not having the big dinner at the hall this year, just something to eat at the, at the garden itself. So if there's someone that could help us be a leader or two people be a leader, we would really appreciate you coming forward very soon because the garden walk is July 26th. It's a Friday evening, and um, we already planted 20 flats of flowers um, this, these last few days, and um, we got about another 100 to go uh, to make the garden gorgeous for the special event. So... Um, this Tuesday, I have another test for this GI issue I have. So I have an MRI in the morning, but that afternoon, Tuesday, we're going to have people come out and plant, if you can, at 1 o'clock on Tuesday to get those flowers ready for the, our special event. Um, this time, uh, it's time to celebrate our graduates again. We are going to honor all of our graduates, high school or college, at the 10 a.m. Mass on Sunday, June 2nd. If you are a graduate or are to graduate this year, please contact Cheryl, our Fourth from Faith Formation Office, for more information. Training for new Eucharistic ministers for Holy Communion and recertification of all of our EMHCs will take place here at St. Philip's on Tuesday, June 11th, and Tuesday, June 25th at 7 p.m. Contact Cheryl if you would like to sign up to still be a minister. Okay? Minister schedules for June are in the sacristy today. Okay, and um, Father Pat's back in the hospital, everyone, again, just to let you know. Uh, it's an unending soap opera, I want you to know. It's been that way for, for many months, this whole year, so uh, keep him in your prayers. Um, he really needs your prayers, he does. Um, we thought he was going to not make it this, this week, uh, but God had a different plan. Um, and so um, we were told that he was going to go into intensive care for a week and a half to get better, but within a day and a half, he was okay again so they put a central line in and uh, took the MRSA away and all the stuff and he's back to wanting to get back to the next place again so so keep him in your prayers okay and um rosemary keep her in your prayers who else we need to pray for i'm trying to remember there's some oh father wayne father wayne um our comes and helps all the time here his father's um going home to heaven he's 98 years old and father wayne is with him right now and um he's in his last um days here on this earth so please keep father wayne and his dad henry or hank that's what he goes by hank in your prayers okay um have a great week everyone enjoy yourselves have a fun picnic do something fun this weekend even though it's supposed to rain find a place to do it okay even in a garage have a nice picnic or something okay have a great time okay 
Let's bow our heads. Oh, I forgot to tell you the last important thing. Uh, the most important thing is we decided on our bid for our addition to our church. We received two major bids um, for our construction, and we took the one that said it was going to be $944,000 to build on to our, our church with those beautiful plans back there. Just look at those, okay? Now, that's nothing to be scared about, to be honest with you, because our parish has been saving money. So we have to give to the project $750,000 to be able to go forth with it, meaning that we probably need to raise about three hundred dollars with contingency things and all that stuff to finish, to make it happen. Now, in our parish, is that something we can't do? What do you think, people of God? Can we do that in our parish? What do you think, yes or no? I thought we could. I think that's nothing, that's not like asking for a million dollars. I don't think that's, you know. So um, I, in the days ahead, we're going to be letting you know what we're going to try to do. Um, but soon, uh, Mike's been helping us, Mike Bolton, kind of leading our group all the time. So um, we're seeing the diocese for many meetings that we have to do. But I think that this summer we'll be able to to go forward and get that done and, and hopefully start building on Labor Day weekend after that weekend, okay? So by next year, we're going to have a whole new building in the back there. It's going to be beautiful. It will be. With the positive thoughts, we can do anything with God's help. We can, okay? So do you happy about that, everyone? We're finally going to get it done. You've been waiting for 20 years to get it done, so I, we're going to get it done. That's a long wait, but, you know, it, it took a long time to build the basilica in, in Rome, too, you know, many years. Okay, let's bow our heads praying for God's blessing. May the Lord always bless you and keep you. May he let his face shine upon you. May the Lord always walk beside you. May the Lord always bless you and keep you keep you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go forth from here glorifying God with our lives. Thanks be to God. And we sing hymn number 567. Holy, 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 number five, six, seven. Yeah. 